Lexus is bringing another special edition to the LC500. We also have details on the delayed and much needed refresh of the Lexus UX subcompact crossover. Let's get into it. <laughs> Over the European newsroom, Europe is getting a new and exciting Hokkaido edition of the LC500. It is affecting the coupe and the convertible. And just to remind you, Hokkaido is the large volcanic island on the very north end where Sapporo is. They make Sapporo beer, but they also tested the LC there in the creation of the vehicle. The Hokkaido edition is limited to 40 cars per body type, so 40 for a coupe, 40 for a convertible, 80 total for Europe this year. Hokkaido is home to the Lexus Shibetsu proving ground where amazing cars such as the LFA were developed, as well as the LC was fine-tuned there by the Takumi Master. Master drivers. Now the special edition is available in flare red, which I believe is infrared here in the United States, sonic platinum, which could be the new iridium color. I don't know why Lexus chooses to name the same paint colors different things around the world. It drives me crazy. But anyways, we also have uh, ultra white, which they call F white and graphite, which I believe is just glossy black. And the Hokkaido edition sports purposeful 21 inch alloy wheels, which look pretty sick. I'm not a big fan of the standard 21 inch wheels on the LC 500. So these are a welcome addition. We also have an exclusive black signature grill and ornamentation and the convertibles roof can be ordered in a striking red or black fabric. Well, if you're getting the Hokkaido, you got to get the red top. There's also been one their exclusive top to the LC500. It was a launch edition uh, with the structural blue. It also had the dark blue top to it. So you got to get the red one if you're going for the Hokkaido edition. The LC Hokkaido will go on sale in Europe from April 22. Now, will it be coming to the United States? That is a possibility. If you remember last year's special edition, it was kind of like the pilot or the airplane special edition. It was all blacked out. It was pretty dang sick. Had the unique wing on it as well. It originally came out for Japan only. Then they brought it over to the United States. So there's a possibility we could see this special edition make its way to the United States as well. But on other Lexus news here, we need to talk about the UX. Uh, for 2023, it's looking like it's getting a, a refresh. It should have got a refresh last year, or should I say for the 2022 model year. It came out in late 2018 to 2019, 2020, 2021. And then typically on the fourth model year of a new product, you have a refresh. Well, that didn't happen for the 2022 model year, and it was a bit of a disappointment because uh, you look at the same platform vehicle, the, the Toyota Corolla Cross that's available pretty much everywhere in the world now. That vehicle is just a lot more practical with its space. And then if you look at what's uh, available in Europe, it has all sorts of new technology on it um, that isn't available on the UX. Well, some of that technology might be coming for the 2023 model year. And hopefully they also update the hybrid powertrain to offer more power Power like the Corolla Cross does in Europe. But let's keep reading. So here are some of the changes. The background of the L mark emblem is all black. The blue background of the hybrid is also changed to black. So as Lexus goes more and more electrified, you're going to see less and less evidence of electrification on their vehicles. They're taking out the hybrid badges, not only in this upcoming UX, but they also did it on the Lexus NX hybrids. They don't have the hybrid lettering on the side of the vehicles. There's also no blue badges, at least upcoming on this UX for the hybrid models. Now this isn't official by any means, so definitely stay tuned for, for the official announcement of the UX refresh, but this information is probably right on point. Now, I don't know if they're going to get rid of the badge on the back, on the tailgate, like we see on the new NX and the new LX. It looks like that continues. It lets, that's what they're saying anyways. But the Lexus badge at the bottom left of the rear tail, tailgate is abolished. They're, ref, they're referring to the F-Sport badge um, that has been on F-Sports in the past on the rear left, either of the trunk or the lift gate. Well, that's going away. And we saw that go away, I believe, when the new IS was refreshed was the first time we saw the F Sport badges kind of done away with on the back of the vehicle. Of course, they're on the sides of the vehicle still. All right, we're getting a larger touch screen. It's going from 10, inch, 10 inches to 12 inches, but not only that, it's replacing the old Lexus software with the brand new Lexus interface that we see on the NX and the LX, which is awesome. And it's definitely a welcome addition. We don't have a touch screen on the current um, UX. It's touchpad only. 
but they're going to get rid of the touchpad. It's going by the wayside. The new Lexus interface doesn't have a touchpad. It's touchscreen only. They're also changing the tire shifter area, console bridge layout that as we know it. All these controls down here, which I actually liked on the NX because it's right where your arm's resting. You can control the volume. You can switch your inputs. You can actually use the tuning knob. Looks like they could be getting rid of that altogether as everything is integrated in the touchscreen. Taking away that functionality, I guess it's, it provides a more aesthetically pleasing experience but in terms of functionality it's not as functional as having your own dedicated tuning knob as well as your preset uh, buttons here is etc and also since the touchpad is going to be gone the cup holders are going to be bigger more more accommodating and they're going to be vertical instead of horizontal here so that is a, a nice welcome change also like how the es was refreshed last year i'm expecting an announcement and availability probably this su upcoming summer of 2022 but let's keep going since everything is integrated in the touchscreen there's going to be no more cd player you can't play Play, uh, your your traditional music or optical discs in this vehicle anymore and that has been the same case on the new nx and lx as well which is kind of sad but to me it's not nearly as devastating as like the lack of dvd systems in like the new sienna which uh, <laughs> totally unrelated but let's keep moving the new clock well i should say there is no new clock as we know it they're getting rid of the old clock the old uh, analog clock we saw that on the nx the lx i don't think has the analog clock anymore either off the top of my head so rest in peace analog clock we're gonna miss you you were a beautiful and timeless piece in lexus designs for many many years it looks like they also have all the upcoming colors and no i'm not going to go over these colors because again lexus used different names for paint colors and interior colors for different regions across the world it looks like the f sport is getting this additional stabilizer bar which is typically sourced from yamaha so that's amazing and just like the new nx it looks like this ux is going to have the digital key which is essentially tied to your phone so your phone acts as the key when <laughs> looking at the sales of the ux here stateside it looks like it's plateaued around 15 16 thousand units per year and i remember lexus saying that's really all they're going to allocate to the united states which is unfortunate because if they had let's say they made it hybrid only they gave us double the allocation i bet they would sell all of them unfortunately lexus is okay with just having a small small segment share of an incredibly hot segment in the in the entire marketplace the, the compact crossover markets is just out of control right now and lexus seems to be okay just being there but not like thriving there so maybe with the refresh they'll decide to increase production for the United States, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Really, the bread and butter is the NX and the RX and the ES below them. And lastly, it's not really Lexus related, but it is Toyota related. And it is kind of Lexus related because this technology should be in the Lexus line. But Lexus and Toyota have decided to give the new teammate a level two autonomous driving, which I tested in Plano, Texas last year kind of freaked me out when I was driving it in the LS 500H. Uh, again, it was prototype software. I'm not that trusting uh, with autonomous vehicles. Anyways, it looks like it's, it's like a $5,000 package here on the top of the grade Mirai, which Mirai is only available, I believe in California, maybe in uh, Hawaii too. And I still believe the XLE grade just under 50,000 with $15,000 worth of uh, hydrogen fuel that they give you or credits worth of that that's the way to go in my opinion spending all this extra money for the limited grade is definitely not worth it 16 grand more and then if you want the the teammate package it's another five grand. so you're over 20 grand more for the level two autonomous driving limited grade over the xle grade which i thought the xle grade again is the way to go if you're in california you live close to fuel cell stations it's a very smooth comfortable car it's arguably the best sedan toyota makes but <laughs> it's completely uh hands off and a forbidden fruit for much of the united states but that's all i have for toyota and lexus news today if you enjoyed today's video smash the like button subscribe if you're not that would help me out i want to get to five five hundred thousand yes 150,000 subscribers by the end of the month i need your help to do that i'll catch you guys in the next video and peace out